good morning everyone we're going to be discussing hip joint in this video hip joint is a synovial joint of ball and socket variety the articular surfaces of the hip joint are head of the femur and the acetabulum of the hip joint the depth of the acetabulum is increased by acetabular labrum lining the acetabulum the ligaments supporting the hip joint are the capsular ligament which is also called as the joint capsule they have the iliofemoral ligament which is the strongest ligament in the body which is also called as the ligament of Bigelow. The iliofemoral ligament extends from the ilium of the hip bone to the femur to be specific anterior superior iliac spine of the ilium to the intertrochantric line of the femur. Then we have the pubofemoral ligament. The pubofemoral ligament extends from the iliopubic eminence of the pubis. As it comes down it blends with the joint capsule and the iliofemoral ligament. The next we have the ischiofemoral ligament which extends from the ischium to the greater trochanter. Apart from this, acetabular labrum, which lines the acetabulum. Then we have the transverse acetabular ligament, which lines, which connects the acetabular labrum. Then we have the ligamentum teres femoris, which extends from the fovea, which is present in the head of the femur, to the acetabular labrum. Coming to the relations of the hip joint, we have anterior relation, posterior relation, superior and inferior relations. Anteriorly, you can find the femoral artery, femoral vein, femoral nerve. Then we also have the iliopsoas tendon which is separated from the hip joint by a bursa. Then we have the straight head of the biceps femoris. Then we also have the pectineus muscle which is related to the hip joint both anteriorly and inferiorly. Coming to the posterior relations, we have the gluteus maximus, then we have the pyriformis, then we have the obturator internus with the superior and inferior gamma line and quadriceps femoris the apart from that the nerves related are sciatic nerve then nerve to quadriceps femoris superior and inferior gluteal nerves which will be present above and below the piriformis superiorly we have the gluteus maximus gluteus medius gluteus minimus and the reflected head of biceps femoris inferiorly we have the obturator externus and pectineus now coming to the bursa around the hip joint we have four bursas around the gluteus maximus one under the gluteus medius, one under the gluteus minimus and one under the psoas tendon. Arterial supply of the hip joint is by the medial and lateral circumflex femoral artery, obturator artery and superior and inferior gluteal artery. Nerve supply is by femoral nerve, branches of the obturator nerve, branches from the quadriceps femoris nerve and we have the branch from superior gluteal nerve. Hip joint is a versatile joint and the stability of the hip joint is provided by the depth of the acetabulum and narrowing of the mouth by the acetabular labrum. Then we also have the iliofemoral, pubofemoral and ischiofemoral ligaments which support the hip joint. Then the strength of the surrounding muscles, all the muscles that surround it. Then we have the length and obliquity of the neck of the femur. So these four factors stabilizes the hip joint. Coming to the muscles producing the movements in the hip joint, what are the movements? We have flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial rotation and lateral rotation. Flexion is by the iliopsoas muscle. Then we also have the sartorius and rectus femoris. Extension is by the gluteus maximus and the hamstring muscles. Abduction is by the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, tensor fascia lata and sartorius. The abductors are also the medial rotators. Again, we have the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscle. Coming to the adduction is usually by the adductor group of muscles, namely adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus. The lateral rotation is by the pyriformis, obturator externus, obturator internus, quadriceps femoris, and with the other short rotators. Coming to the clinical correlation, the most important one is fracture of the neck of the femur, which can be, you know, due to old age and osteoporosis the types of fractures can be either subcapital cervical basal or pretrochantric fracture dislocation of the hip joint again which is very common it can be either congenital or acquired in congenital it can be because of the loose joint capsule or it can be due to hypoplasia of the acetabulum of the femoral head the acquired one it can be due to automobile accidents namely the car accidents where there is dislocation of the hip posteriorly causing the sciatic nerve injury Apart from that, we have coxa vara and coxa valga, where the neck shaft angle is either increased or decreased. Weaver's bottom occurs due to a bursa getting infected, namely the subgluteal bursa, the curse of between the gluteus maximus and the ischial tuberosity. Most common in tailors of weavers, and it's the name weaver's bottom. 
with this the hip joint is over thank you